broken wine of a soul in mercy shed by whom the words of life were spoken and in whose death our sins are dead who drawn the heart by sorrow broken look on the tears by sinners shed and be your feast to us a token that by your grace our souls are fed sit at this place dear lord and father fill up the cup and break the bread oh let us feel your loving power oh let us hear the words you said this is my blood your spirit make it whole remember me with food or token bread of the world wine of the soul bread of the world wine Good morning, Redeemer. It's good to be back with you after a couple of weeks away. Pastor Guigenti was here and did a fine job, I understand, so we thank him for his service. And I join, we join back together on this 10th Sunday in Pentecost. The phrase... That's the best thing since sliced bread. Generally refers to something that's needed or something that's convenient or something that's advantageous. And that's kind of how the Israelites viewed Jesus. He provided bread for them when he fed the 5,000 and they wanted more. They saw him as the answer to their needs. Of course, we know Jesus is more much more than sliced bread. He's the bread of life. We're kind of like the Israelites often. We often think religion is something that helps to make our lives go better, but actually faith oftentimes makes our lives more difficult. But Jesus offers himself freely to us, not to make life more convenient, but to fill it with grace, to fill it with purpose, to fill it with joy. The psalmist writes these words. So God commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven. So the people ate and were well filled, for God gave them what they craved. We now come into his presence as we join together in singing our open hymn, opening hymn, Blessed Jesus, Living Bread, which is in your worship folder, Kirk and Mark will lead us along with Lloyd.
Please stand as you're able and turn to page four in your worship folders. We make our beginning this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, we gather in your name, excited to enjoy your blessings. Care for us now. Prepare our hearts and minds that we may, together as your people, grow closer to you and forever enjoy your grace. Amen. Amen. We are God's people through Jesus Christ, yet we have not honored him with our words and actions. Let us take refuge in his infinite mercy and confess our sins to him and one another. Amen. Confess that I have sinned, I have not followed the ways of Jesus and have decided my own ways. I have left things undone that the Lord desires me to do. I have not loved others as Jesus has loved me, yet I trust in the love and mercy of Jesus, my Savior. I am forever his and am not turning back to him. It is my hope that I will be forgiven, renewed, and guided by him today. My dear friends, Jesus loves you unconditionally. By his death and resurrection, you have been saved. Your sins are forgiven. He is with you no matter what happens in this life to care for you and to guide you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated for our hymn of praise.
There you go. The Old Testament reading Thank you. We'll get you fixed up here, Jim. I'll stop dressed this morning. There you go. The Old Testament reading is from the 16th chapter of Exodus, verses 2 through 15. It's about the bread from heaven. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven to you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough from that, for that day. In this way I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day, they are to prepare what they bring in, and that is to be twice as much as they gathered on the other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, in the evening you will know that it was the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, and in the morning you will see the glory of the Lord because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we that you should grumble against us? Moses also said, You will know that it was the Lord when he gives you meat to eat in the evening and all the bread you want in the morning, because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we? You are not grumbling against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses told Aaron, Say to the entire Israelite community, Come before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. While Aaron was speaking to the whole Israelite community, they looked toward the desert, and there was the glory of the Lord appearing in the cloud. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, at twilight you will eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. That evening, quail came and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is a bread the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 16, about unity in the body of Christ. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he led captives in his train and gave gifts to man. What does he ascended mean, except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. It was he who gave some, some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching 
and by the cunning and craftiness of men in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head, that is Christ. For him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Brother Jim. In honor of our Lord Jesus Christ, let's stand for the reading of Holy Gospel, as you are able, which today is recorded in the sixth chapter of John, beginning at the 22nd verse. And I inadvertently got the wrong reading in the bulletin, so I'm going to read the right one, but it won't match the words that are in the bulletin. The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the opposite shore of the lake realized that Only one boat had been there, and that Jesus had not entered it with his disciples, but that they had gone away alone. Then some boats from Tiberias landed near the place where the people had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. Once the crowd realized that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Capernaum in search of Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. You are looking for me, not because you saw miraculous signs, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. On him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, What must we do to do the works God requires? Jesus answered, The work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, What miraculous sign then will you give us that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our forefathers ate manna in the desert, As it was written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat, Jesus said to them. I tell you the truth, it is not Moses who has given you bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, from now on, give us that bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. All right, my young friends. I don't know if you heard, but a little bit ago, when Mr. Kasha was reading the epistle reading, he said these words. Make every effort to keep unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace, for there is one body, one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. Did you notice anything about that? Were there a lot of ones in there? There were a lot of ones in there. A lot. And Jesus is talking about unity and togetherness. Which, I thought about what's a good way to illustrate that. And I thought of something. And I'm going to do it with these cards. I'm going to turn this around a little bit. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start putting these cards into two piles. And as I keep going, whenever you want me to stop, all you have to do is say stop. Okay? So Braylon, when you want me to stop, say stop. I'm keeping going here. Okay, stop. 
Now, are you sure that's where you want me to stop, Messiah, or uh, Jeremiah? Do you think that was a good place for me to stop? Should I go some more? Or was that a good place for me to stop? You want me to go more? Yeah? Okay, well, I can go a few more. Say stop when you want me to stop, Jeremiah. I'm waiting. Did you say stop? Okay. All right. We stopped. Now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take these two piles of cards and I'm going to divide them in two again. Like this. And I'm going to go through the whole thing. All the cards that you told me until we said stop, okay? And I'm going to do the same with this one. It's hard to stay there on this slanted little table here. Stay. Okay, we'll deal with you once and for all. All right, there. Now, let's see what's left. What's that? That's an ace. That's one in cards, right? One. One Lord. Let's see what's under this one. Another ace. One. How about this one? What do you think's under here? No, one. One Lord, one faith, one hope, one baptism. We're all together as one. And that's a good way for us to help us remember the unity that we have in Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, help us to be together. Help us to be unified in you. Help us to be one as your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we continue now with our hymn of the day, which is, Lord, you give the Great Commission.
I'll be right back. I forgot something this morning. I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the bread of life. Amen. Amen. I'm going to do something a little bit different today. We're going to do something that's a little di different. I want to do something that's introspective. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to take a look at your hands. Look at your fingers and your fingernails. Maybe the scars that are on them. Maybe the wrinkles. Some of us have age spots. What do you like about them? What, what don't you like about your hands? Are there any particular skills or particular things that your hands allow you to do? Are there any particular ways that your hands have been difficult or may be painful to you. What you can build, what you can twist. Maybe you have arthritis. Now, look at your knees. Now some of you have clothing on over your knees. Some of you don't, but you won't be able to look at them if you do. So you'll have to remember your knees and remember what they look like under your clothing. You probably saw them this morning. What do you like about your knees? What don't you like about your knees? Are there any particular things that your knees allow you to do? Are there any ways in which your knees have been difficult or painful to you? Many of you have had knee surgery. Now think about both your hands and your knees. How do they benefit you? What would your life be like if you didn't have a hand? Or what would your life be like if you didn't have one of your knees? Or what would your life be like if you didn't have both hands? Or, or God forbid, both knees? Those hands that you looked at, and those knees that you looked at, they're really gifts from God, aren't they? And yes, sometimes they might be painful to you. Sometimes they may not do what you want them to do, especially as we get older, or sometimes they may hurt you, but they're yours. They're part of you, unified into your body. Now, you guys were really uncomfortable with this so far. So I'm going to even make you more uncomfortable. Those of you who are able, and that's most of you, please stand up. Now I want you to look around at the church. And I'm not talking about the walls. 
I'm not talking about the beautiful appointments. You're uncomfortable because you're looking at me. You're not looking at the church anymore. I'm talking about the people. You're still very uncomfortable. You like to look at me, but you don't like to look at one another. This makes you very uncomfortable. The people of the church, they're the church. And they're gifts to you also. And what do the people that are around you enable you to do? Are the people that are around you, the church, are they sometimes painful or difficult to you? Just like your hands and your knees, they're part of you. And you would not be who you are without the church around you without the people around you. And sometimes they may cause pain, sometimes they may cause hurt, but you are better off with them than you are without them because they are yours and you are theirs and you are unified and growing together as the body of Christ. All right, you can get back into your comfort zones and sit down. And that's basically the message that Paul had for the Ephesians today in our epistle reading. Paul had just spent three chapters, the first three chapters of his book, telling, them, telling the Ephesians about the marvels that God had done for them in Jesus Christ. He told them that he had predestined them to be his own. He comforted them with the knowledge that Jesus had taken their, their, their sins upon him and that they now had forgiveness and eternal life through his death and through his resurrection. He assured them that they who were once dead were now alive in Christ. And then Paul makes this shift in chapter 4 here. He says, as a prisoner of the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling that you have received. And then he lifts some godly characteristics like humility and gentleness and love and patience and peace and kindness. And Paul says, that... That is what the Christian life should look like. That's what our lives should look like. Because that's the life that we're called to as Christians. The life we're called to as children of God. And then Paul focuses on the major theme of his book his letter, his epistle, whatever word you want to use. Our unity, our oneness in Christ. Seven times in those two verses that I read a little bit ago to the kids, Paul mentions the word one. Seven times, that's the number of completeness, the number of perfection in Scripture. There's one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. See, as Christians, as members of God's family, as members of his church, we're one in Christ. And we're brought together in that unity through baptism, through God's word, through his gift to us at the altar of Holy Communion. 
And the fancy churchy name for that is the Una Sancta. And that's what we confess in the words of the Apostles' Creed. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. Because broadly speaking, there's only one church. That's the spiritual body of Jesus Christ. And that's, there's only one head of that church, and that's none other than Jesus Christ alone. And Paul is telling us that as members of that body, as members of God's family, we should always seek to remain and to be part of that una sancta through faith in Jesus. And we do that by visibly gathering together in God's, with God's people. We do that by reading, marking, learning, and inwardly digesting God's word through worship, through study, through devotion, through prayer. We do that by avoiding false teachers, by avoiding false teaching, by avoiding false churches. And all of those things we do and we live and we teach and we proclaim by the power of the Holy Spirit so that as Paul says, the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Will you pray with me? Lord, keep us steadfast in your word so that our unity would grow and flourish. Let us continue to grow together as your people, as your body, as your hands and feet and knees, that we might act as your joyful servants, built up and strengthened by your Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able. As we join together in confession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, which are printed in your worship folder on page 9. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let us now pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray that the church, nourished by the bread of life and bearing witness to one another in love, might continue to build on the foundation of Jesus, the prophets, and the evangelists towards maturity in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for confidence in your provision that we would 
trust in your promises and look to your hand to provide all we need to support this body and life in the world to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that nations throughout the world would be places of stability, peace, and care for, for the general welfare of their citizens. We pray that all government leaders, national, state, and local, would carry out the tasks entrusted to them with humility and wisdom according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who serve in our armed forces and their families that they may be kept safe from harm, that victims of persecution and violence and warfare would be delivered from those horrors, and that our enemies would no longer wish to harm us, but instead seek peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick in body and mind, those who are hospitalized, those who are facing surgery, those who are re receiving ongoing treatments, those who are convalescing, and those that we name before you today. Jackie Barber, Melissa Belpatio, Maggie Cattell, Dolores Giles, Donna Harper, Geraldine Holland, Nita Kelly, Jean Moore, David Sauer, and Dan Stevens. May they experience the peace of Christ beyond understanding. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who tra travel, that they may arrive safely at their destinations, and that summer vacationers may experience refreshment, rest, and renewal. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we pray for the families of our congregation and community, especially those who are celebrating birthdays in the coming week. Charles Barnett, Jillian Barber, Bobby Brown, Kenya Terrell, and Amy Stevens. Enable us to walk in humility, gentleness, patience, and unity so that we bear with one another in love and are eager to maintain unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our play. Father, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, and the knowledge that he has defeated death through his suffering and resurrection on the cross at Calvary. We lift up the family of Lee Kleinsteiber, who you've called to your side. Lord, we ask that you would comfort them in the knowledge of Jesus' victory over death and that you would wipe away their tears. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, we pray that the people of our congregation may labor not only for the food that perishes, but also for the food that endures to eternal life, and that believing in Jesus, the bread of life, we may be joined together in one body, built up in the love of Christ Jesus our Lord. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please stand as you're able for the communion liturgy, which begins on page 10 in your worship folders. In the protection of the church, this place where the glory of the Lord dwells with us, we are blessed to come to the table with our Lord Jesus Christ and celebrate this eternal feast. He cares for you and through this meal provides all your needs for this life and the next. Assurance of his love, forgiveness of your sins, and the strengthening of your faith. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we humbly come to your table with joy in our hearts, for you are a perfect and all-powerful God who has come here to us. Bless us through this holy meal, 
and keep us forever in your family. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, All of you drink of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this every time you drink it in memory of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take and eat. This is the very body of Jesus Christ given into death for you. Jeremiah, may you always know how much Jesus loves you and that he has died for you. Braylon, you're very precious in Jesus' sight. May you always know his love for you and stay truthful to him. Amen. Take and eat the very body of Jesus given into death for you. And take and drink. This is the true blood of Jesus Christ poured out for you on the cross of Calvary. Now, my friends, may this very body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus fill you with strength and keep you strong and steadfast in the one true faith until Christ returns to claim us. Depart in his peace and in his joy. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take and eat. This is the very body of Jesus Christ, crucified for you on the cross of Calvary. And take and drink the very blood of Jesus, given into death for you, for the forgiveness of all your sins. And now, my dear friends, may this very body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus fill you with strength and keep you strong and steadfast in the one true faith until Christ returns to claim us, depart in his peace and in his joy. Amen.
take and eat. This is the very body of Jesus Christ, given into death for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. And now take and drink the very blood of Christ, shed for you on the cross of Calvary. And now, my friends, may this very body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ fill you with strength and keep you strong and steadfast in the one true faith until Christ returns to claim us, depart in his peace and in his joy. Amen. and in his joy. Amen. Let's stand for prayer. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us in, with, and under bread and wine with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus, supplying not only for our stomachs, but also for our souls. Sustain us in faith that we may do the good that you desire and faithfully live out our days in your name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, my friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and fill you with his peace both today and tomorrow and into eternity. And all God's people said, Amen. You may be seated. All right, it's so good to be back with you. If you brought a gift for the food pantry today, it's, there's a card in the, in the narthex that you can place that on if you haven't done so already. The church council meets tomorrow night at 6 via Zoom, and you should have the link for that, or Jess will be sending it out again. Backpacks will be ready tomorrow morning, the Backpack for School project. If you'd like to lend a hand with that, if you'd like to come out and lend a hand, be here about, what, 8, Marcia? About 8 o'clock, okay? Community Bible Study meets again this week on Zoom on Wednesday evening at 645. Next Sunday is our Back to School Bash. So there's information in the worship folder about that. A time for food and fellowship and fun. Bring games. Plan to have a good time. Community Festival and Health Care. Community Festival and Health Fair Planning Meeting. Boy, that's a mouthful is after the service over in the fellowship hall and in two weeks we will have a live voters meeting right here in the sanctuary that's on the 15th after service our first one that we've had for quite a while did i miss anything 
Hearing none, our closing hymn is printed in your worship folder. Bind us together. <laughs> 